something i'm not used to because especially being from boston like the moment i stepped out of the plane i'm like god damn like, <laughs> like the vegas eats something else to be honest i don't know if that's about i mean i know you, you live in california but i don't know you have the same type of feeling once you got off that plane man it's hot as hell out here bro uh, right now it's hot in cali it's like in the hundreds like low hundreds like 104 103 mm. it's 115 116 all week damn, it's insane man, hot and in Vegas, it's like a desert, so it's, there's no trees, no shade, super hot, but what sucks, last night we got to the hotel room, and it was uh, 80, 90, mm. 90 in the room, we're like, hold on, yeah. yeah, 90 degrees in the room, bro, hot as hell, like, what the hell, um, we turn, we start cranking the AC, um, about five hours in, six hours in, it's like, I'm we're so hot in the room, Get us down like 85. We're like, it's progress, right? Yeah. I call my girl. I'm like, dude, it's so hot in here, right? She goes, why don't you call? So I call downstairs. They send a guy up. They're like, dude, this is broke in here. It's fucking broke. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. So they moved us to another room. Okay. Um, it was nice, like 70 in here. Nice temperature. We had to move all our shit over, though, at like midnight. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which was worth it. It was like one room over though, so it, oh, okay. it took a while. But it, it was upstairs. It would have been a nightmare trying to get everything unpacked and packed back up. But oh, here we are today. Slept wonderfully in a nice air conditioned controlled room. Um, and it's great, bro. Yeah, that's good. Going, I, mean, I mean, for you, like especially on fight week and like on such a big fight week, because I mean, especially like with the Connor fight, or the Connor and Poirier fight. And like you landed, uh, did you just get to Vegas? Like you said, you landed like last night. So today, it's like pretty much like your first full day in Vegas. So like, what's what's uh, what's on the schedule today? Is like a lot of media interviews. Like, am I am I the first yeah. one? Or? <laughs> You're the first one. I had to cancel one. I had to do my breath exercises. I do like um, with my guy Noah out in Kauai. Um, we do it's, it's kind of like this Wim Hof kind of shit. Um, we do like an hour session and all that stuff. So I just do that, but I have interviews all day, um, back to back to back. I kind of moved some out of the way because it was too many for me. I'm, I, I don't like talking all the time, you know? So, yeah. um, so I got yours in and there's a lot more today. I got to do a lot of photos too for that new Venom gear you got. Yeah. Um, we got new Venom stuff. So we have to do all the new videos, all the new pictures, all the new, like, like shadow boxing videos, we had to do everything new for the Venom gear. But I like the gear, man. I fucking opened it up last night, and I like 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 the details on the stuff, mm-hmm. and like the shiny black like puff paint on there, and the fucking I like it. At first, I didn't like it. Like, oh, I don't know, but no, I like it way better than Reebok. To be real, yeah, definitely looks a lot more cleaner. Definitely looks a lot more cleaner, especially like especially this one. I know like it's not like fight gear, but it's, it's got that nice that nice medium feel to it. You know what I mean? Makes it makes the games uh, pop out a little bit, you know. I mean, a little bicep that. <laughs> yeah, I got one of those, so um, I like it. There you go. Yeah, man. So to your, to your fight with Carlos Condit, man. So I mean, Carlos Condit, a legend in the game, right? So like, when you first got the call up to to fight Carlos, like, you know, what, what was the feeling like? You know, what I mean, like, what was it? Was it psyched? Like, you know, what I mean, especially you knowing that he's such a big big legend, he's fought like legends like George St. Pierre. The list can go on and on and on. So like I heard you call him the le- like I heard, I heard you call yourself the legend killer. So you know, tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, I've in my career, I'm always fighting the best guys. Like um, even my first fight, I mean, in my amateur days, like my coach has always had me fight the best guys. And I, at first, I was like, I, I kind of got used to it. it. My coach would be like, "Well, who's your best guy?" You know, we got a guy. You know what I mean? Like, got the, he like, son, trust me, it'll pay off in the end. Find the best guys. And 
even out here, like in my pro, they beat in my pro days, my young pro days. You know, I fought legends around Sacramento and um, California and beat them. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, beat Tiago Alves, even though, you know, the scorecards were, were fucked, beat him. Um, but I just, I want to fight the best guys, man. And to me, legends are fucking some of the best. Like these new guys aren't the best guys to me. Um, you know, some guy that's had a few wins. That's not a guy that's the best guy to me. Um, it's just kind of like who the UFC says is ranked, mm. you know? To me, it's guys that everyone knows. You know, Tiago Alves is the fucking Carlos Connors, the Robbie Lawlers, like these guys that like have put their fucking time in, bro. So um, they called me. I was at Crips and Burgers. It's a restaurant with my family and my manager called me and like, well, we got the call. And UFC 264, Carlos Conde. I fucking started screaming and I said, sign that shit. Fuck yeah. Like, let's go, you know? Um, I accepted on the phone. Um, it took him about two and a half weeks to accept. Um, we didn't hear anything. Like, we didn't, we didn't think we'd get the fight. Like, a week passed. I mean, usually it's the weekend. Like, they go through the weekend. They get the paperwork Monday. So that goes. That weekend don't hear nothing. That week don't hear nothing. We're following up. Hey, what's up? Next weekend, nothing. That next week, nothing. We're like, people are like, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know if he's doing contract stuff. Or who knows? Uh, but uh, I'm glad he accepted. We finally got the bad agreement. Uh, and I couldn't be happier, really, to, to fight him. I wanted to fight him since I was young. Like, I remember watching him on WEC, fucking pacing on the cage and mugging. Like, oh, I'm going to fight that guy. I'm like, I want to fight him. I don't fucking fight him. I'll fuck him up. I can't wait to fight him. I want to fight him. And then here we are, like, years later, like, um, coming full circle, man. So it's like, a, he's one of my favorite fighters. Not anymore. Um, my coach is in my mental coach that I have to you know, change that up. Like, yeah, you were a fan, but you're fighting this guy who's trying to take your money, um, trying to take from your family. So I'm not okay with that. So uh, my mind shift changed. My mindset changed. It shifted to he's just another body, you know? Yeah. So I'll be a fan after, you know what I mean? Like, um, I'll get his autograph and shit after I beat him up and um, thank the guy. Yeah. Uh, take a picture with you, you yeah. know. But now, I mean, um, to be on this card, like, uh, I mean, they get to put this card, this fight on any card. I, I could have been fighting two weeks ago. I'd be fighting next weekend. I could be fighting on any spot. But for to be on this fucking Connor Poirier card on the main event prelim, like, <laughs> it's a fucking crazy, bro. Yeah, I know. And especially it's with, here for a reason. They put me here for a reason. Yeah. And like, and does it add any like any, any extra motivation, especially like you said, big con, big Connor and Poirier fight and like the first event in Vegas that's going to have a live crowd again because it's been, dude, it's been a year and a half with no no crowds or nothing. Yeah. It must have been a trip fighting in that cage with no one there. So hearing that energy, is it just going to bring an extra, you know, sort of motivation in there? For sure. Like the last, I've been this my last two opponents with no crowd, you know? Yeah. So just like, woo! You know, yeah, like, you know, just me, you know? Yeah. Um, but I mean, it was, it was a good kind of reset to kind of fight without the crowd for me. And um, I learned a lot from that. You know, it's quiet and it's more, um, more martial artsy kind of, mm -hmm. more like a duel, like, like a samurai duel to me, you know? And it's just, one-on-one, -on -one, you have your crowd, you have your team, and that's it. Like, you could be more focused and stuff, and learn your shit, but I miss the crowd, man. Yeah. I can't wait to – the energy. I mean, Carlos is a fan favorite. Um, the crowd's going to be bananas, you know. Um, it's going to be wild. I'm um, really looking forward to it. Yeah, and it's gonna be insane too. And like, and you kind of like mentioned it right there, right? Like fighting without the crowd, it was kind of a reset button in, in, in a way. And like, by you hitting that reset button, man, dude, I just feel like, you know, 
your fights have just gotten more and more vicious. Obviously, you know, with the Ramsey uh, from Ninja fight that you you pretty much cut the dude's uh, ear off with the elbow. <laughs> but, dude, I, I've been wanting to ask you this, especially, right? Like, when you hit him with that elbow and then you see that ear just hanging off, what – I mean, you kind of said it in the octagon. You're like, oh, my God. But, like, please tell me what went through your head when you saw that ear just dangling right there, dude. <laughs> It was disgusting, bro. I honestly didn't know that I did that um, then, like, in the mix. Mm -hmm. I knew my corner was telling me, you know, peel away, peel away. I was like, no, I'm going to elbow this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I did, I got back head position again. I remember just being on him, you know. He was flushing down the drain. He was beat to a fucking pulp. And I remember peeling back, like, um, it was like on me, like the ear was like on me, bro. And I, like, oh my god, I seen inside. It was like a black hole, bro. Like, it was disgusting. Oh, doesn't help with those eggs right there. But it was fucking disgusting, bro. And he stopped. He was like, what? Like, <laughs> you know, he was like, what? Fucking. His face was priceless. Um, and I, yeah, I ran over there and fuck him. Yeah, let's go. Uh, I knew Ashley was they were gonna fix that. Uh, but dude, like like you said, it's like the fact that you said you had that reaction in the octagon. I mean, then again, like you know, someone's ears like off someone's like you know face is not a funny thing. But like your reaction was like, oh my god! Like I honestly thought it was like someone like outside of the crowd, not you. And then when I was rewatching it, I was like, dude, <laughs> you can see you can see there was a little a little human size. Like damn man, I. I really am a savage. I really did this to this man. <laughs> but but yeah, man. But like your next fight, dude. Yeah, the fight. Wait, go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> now it's like the funny thing about that. Um, that was my first fight, like consciously having a good time and consciously having fun and consciously being excited for the fight. And and I did that. It went viral. It was on TMZ. It was on World Star. All my son's friends seen it. He's ten. All his friends on seen it on tiktok and like all this stuff uh, like you better listen boy <laughs> you know? yeah dude and then dude your next fight another vicious finish dude so like you hit him with that like you hit him with that one two and like i've been hearing you say it in interviews dude like you hit him and you sent the man flying across the cage so again first like same question i asked you with the first one what were your thoughts there when you leg legitimately hit him with that shot finished them and like you pretty much just flatline them and like right after that you had a little celebration you gotta have kind of nick diasness just kind of just laying on the octagon right there so tell us about what was going through your mind there <laughs> so when i hit him um it was i knew i was gonna fi finish him i knew it like mm -hmm. i had no doubts just like i have no doubts um this saturday um but i hit him and i knew him if you look at my face right after it's like a mm, like motherfucker mm, kind of face, like right after. So I turned around, like I told you, motherfucker was kind of my fucking like attitude. And I only laid down. I wasn't trying to be like Nate Diaz. I only, I was going to jump on the cage, but they told me if I jump on the cage, they take half my purse. Yeah. So I was going to run up the cage, lay down, lay down. So I had to go lay down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I laid down just so I would not climb on the cage. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, for me, that was like to be moved to the co-main event that day and to do that to um, a guy four and one in the UFC, a real um, good striker that's been knocking everybody out. Like mm -hmm. for me to smoke him like that, um, oh, it was good. It was good. Yeah, it, it was real good. That's awesome, man. So now, like you said, man, kind of like bring a kind of full circle, right? So like, you know, kind of like the last question, I, I don't want to keep you too much. You know what I mean? I know you have a big, long day ahead of you. One last question, because I've been hearing you say in interviews, right? Like now, especially after with this two win, like two win streak, like it's kind of like, you've kind of found like your sauce, right? Like you, you, you like everything's starting to come, come together and everything like that, right? So like, if you were to give advice to like your younger self and earlier on in your career, what would you give um, to, the, to yourself early on, like starting off? Oh, I'd say, I mean, I've always worked hard. Like, no one works harder than me that I know, like, or that I've met. I don't care. Um, so it's not, wasn't the thing. It's about being your, you, you have to find who you are, man. You have to find who you are early. I mean, you have to find who you are eventually. Mm. Um, 
really the me- the the thing that this wasn't there was all the mental. I mean, I've always been mentally tough and all this, but I was so mentally tough that I was like blocking like the rest of my shit. Um, you know, like it's like when you go hit a baseball or something or a golf ball, like you can't just try to hold it that hard. You can and touch your body and you have to just kind of let that shit flow, you know? Um, you gotta hit that sweet spot. And if you do anything, you know, you can't be so fucking tight. And, um, you know, fighting stressful, right? Um, you can imagine fighting and there's millions of people watching. You're fighting a guy that wants to fucking kick your ass. He's good. One of the best in the world and fucking this pressure, maybe you lost a fight. You didn't really lose, you know, some judge fucked you. So you have to win. Like you lose too straight. They fucking cut you. Like it's fucking cutthroat in this bitch. Mm. So you have a lot of pressure. So it makes you fucking tense. You know, you, you have a lot of pressure. And I mean, I fought a ton of guys on like my last fight on my contract with like a loss before that. And they trying to set me up, but I beat those motherfuckers up. So, you know. It's part of the game, but now it's like, um, I, Danny Patterson, bro, he got me with my core values and we do a lot of mental stuff, but he got me to feel like who I really am and like what makes me the best UFC fighter in the world, you know, and I had to really get to that. And my main thing is being authentic, like, mm-hmm. like outside, of the cage, outside of the cage, I'm like this, I'm cool, I'm funny, fucking, I'm like, oh, fucking, yeah, fuck, I fight, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not like that. Yeah. But in the cage, I'll get like that because you're fighting and there's stress. And uh, he he watched some of my old fight videos. Uh, he said my best fights. I I enjoyed myself. He watched them without sound, uh, without commentary and everything. Like um, I fought this guy David Mitchell before I got signed. The ex UFC guy. I fucking he was so badass, but I smashed him and like. 40 seconds, dropped him three times. It was the king of Sacramento fight, but I was smiling the whole time. And I fought Mike Perry. Um, that was one of my biggest ones. He was surging. Fuck you, the next best thing. I beat him up in Orlando on Fox, on Simpsons Fox, on the main card, on the last fight of my contract off the loss. So, but I fucked him up, but I had, I always had fun and I fucking pieced his ass up like beautifully. Mm-hmm. And I had fun. So it's like, hey, the guy was onto something. He's like, you have, when you have fun, you fuck guys up like easy. I'm like, let me have more fun. So I started training like that and being authentic. That's 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 how I am. So now I could translate that in the cage. And he's, like I said, when I took Ramiz's ear off, that's the first fight that I like had fun. Mm-hmm. It was like, hold on. I had fun. I went viral. Okay, let me let me do this again. Mm-hmm. added some more tools had more fun this last time and did that to song king and like <laughs> hold on we got something going on we yeah. got we found the recipe so um it's going to be more of the same and this next july 10th 2021 will be my next best performance to date mm-hmm. and uh it's gonna be beautiful i can't wait yeah and we can't wait either man so before you go you want to plug in your social media so everyone here can go and follow you yeah, you guys, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Clubhouse app, but I'm mainly on Instagram. Um, that's where you can find me. Everything else is kind of side shit. Uh, Max Payne Griffin, though, one word. You got the blue check on there. Um, you'll find me, bro. Add me. Um, I got the best memes in the UFC. I'm, you know, uh, going to battle with Darren Till and, uh, you know, Lewis, so. There you go. But yeah, my shit's right on the edge, right on the edge, you know. So, yeah, buddy, yeah. fight for the whole family. Yes, yeah, sir. So, man, once again, thank you again for giving me just a little bit of time on Fight Week. I don't want to take more of your time. I know you got a long day. So, you know, hopefully, we can do this again later on in the future. So, Max, we'll be rooting for you on Saturday. And uh, to everyone watching, peace.